Hello everybody, welcome back to Alan Wall's Photography. I'm Alan, this is video five in our Lightroom tutorial series. Today we're gonna to be talking about hue, saturation, and luminance. So today we are going to tackle color in Lightroom. It's an incredibly powerful tool that Lightroom gives us for adjusting color. But it's worth mentioning, I think, right at the outstart that the way we deal with color in Lightroom is by adding subtle tweaks to the color in our photographs, as opposed to the kind of dramatic artistic effects you can, uh, you can achieve in programs like Photoshop. The color panel in Lightroom is not designed for color replacement. Uh, it's really designed to, like I say, adjust the colors that exist in your photograph. So we're gonna walk through the panel. I'm gonna show you what it does, give you a few examples of, of how the various tools work. But just like everything else in Lightroom, this is something that you are going to uh, learn by doing. It's best to just grab a whole bunch of uh, raw photographs that uh, have various different color mixtures in them and fiddle around with a panel to see, see what it does and, and learn your style. I really think that there is as much of your own personal style and how you use the HSL panel as in any other part of Lightroom. So let's get into it, take a look. Here we are in the um, HSL panel. It's the panel right underneath the tone curve that we talked about in the last video. There are three parameters that we can change in color photographs in Lightroom. They are the hue, the saturation, and the luminance. Now, the way I have it laid out, the hue, the saturation, and the luminance for all of the colors are in one panel. I prefer this because oftentimes a change in a color saturation is going to call for a change in luminance somewhere else. I like to have all of the sliders at my fingertips when I need them. You'll also notice that each of the panels, hue, saturation, and luminance, have a targeted adjustment tool, just like the tone curve did. Uh, this is uh, the icon, and you would click on it, well, let's just, let's just do that. We, we take the icon, click on it, move it over to the picture, and then anywhere we click and slide up and down will change the luminance of the, the hues that exist underneath our pointer. We'll get to that in just a minute. I'll turn that off for now. Lightroom has chosen eight colors. Uh, they are not the way you'd normally see the colors arranged in uh, a, a, a spectrum, for example. But from, uh, from the point of view of how color is adjusted in Lightroom, they make perfect sense. The colors are red, orange, yellow, and green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta. And if you have trouble remembering them, there's a handy mnemonic that you can, uh, that you can use. It's much easier to remember. And that is Rebarbative Orthopedic Yohimbine Gubblers Abhor Biphasic Pulsatile Modulation. So if you just remember that, you'll remember the colors. I made that up, that's just ridiculous. Just, you don't even have to remember the colors. They're written down in the HSL panel. I hope nobody wrote those words down. Anyway, if you don't want to work in all the panels at once, you can click on hue and it will limit the panel to just the hue sliders and same for saturation and luminance. If you want to work with individual colors, click the color uh, tab in the title bar. And that will allow you to choose a color and it will show you the hue, saturation, and luminance slider for that color. I find this to be um, uh, not very useful uh, because of course, 
I can't see the other adjustments that are being made when I use these sliders. Even if you click the all and have all the colors here, it's still confusing to me. But that's only because I'm used to working in HSL with all of the, the sliders available. You'll find the one that makes the most sense for you and it'll depend largely on the kind of photographs you take and what kind of adjustments you make. So let's talk briefly about what these are and what they do. The hue panel, the first one, is referring to the actual colors in your photograph. That is what hue means. The, uh, the, the color red is a hue. As we move a slider in, under the, the, the red heading towards the right, that red becomes more orange, so the hue changes. So these sliders actually change the colors. Let's go to one that you'll be able to see better. If we go to the blue slider, for example, for the sky, if I slide the hue to the right, that is towards the purple and the sky will become ridiculous. Similarly, if we slide the hue slider on the blue channel to the left, it will become turquoise also ridiculous. So that is proof right there that when you make adjustments to colors in the hue panel, that you make very cautious adjustments because the changes can be dramatic and they can render a photograph um, un unlookable at. <laughs> Anyway, if you click on hue, saturation, or luminance, it will reset all your sliders to the middle. The targeted uh, adjustment tool, click on it. If we went to the, to the blue up here while we're in the hue panel, we can do just what we did with the slider. We can make it purple or all the way to turquoise. You will notice though, that if you look at the panel, on the right as I am adjusting the blue in the sky. It's also adjusting the aqua slider. That is because when I placed my cursor here, the, the colors underneath that cursor included blue and aqua. So the targeted adjustment tool is gonna have effects on more than just the primary color. Any other colors that are in there will also be adjusted. Let's return that back to normal. Use this very sparingly, maybe nudge the red a little bit to the right if you're trying to brighten up skin tones. Um, almost anything else that, uh, that you change, unless it's for a specific artistic purpose, will have a tendency to look uh, unnatural. The exception to that being, if, if you have a camera that has trouble handling colors well and the camera is giving you a sky that's too turquoise, then is when you would use the hue slider here to bring it back towards the shade of blue that you want to see. So that's what happens in hue. In saturation, we're talking about the depth of the color, the richness, <coughs> richness of the color. When I say that uh, uh, this green is greener than that green, that's because this green is more saturated. And let's pick uh, the sky again, and we'll use the blue slider uh, to uh, slide it to the right, which will be to oversaturate it. And it, it goes pretty far. Remember that if you saturate blues, too much in a photo, in a Lightroom photograph, you're gonna have a tendency to introduce noise into the darker areas, so be very careful with that. What happens if we slide it to the left? If, we, if sliding to the right makes the blue bluer, what happens when you go left? Well, it makes the blue grayer. It moves towards unsaturated or, or grayscale. It doesn't get all the way to grayscale, it's still got a tint of, of blue in it, as you'll see if you, if you look, say, at an example of a, a purer color. If I desaturate the red, it will still have a tint of pink, and um, the yellow gets almost to gray. 
uh, but uh, it doesn't do it all the way. Use caution. Let's go back to that photograph for a minute and uh, return the saturation to normal. So saturation is another adjustment that needs to be used thoughtfully. You don't just want to saturate all your colors uh, like you would, by the way, do if you're in the basic panel. You'll remember that there is a saturation slider under presence in the, uh, in the basic panel. That, by the way, is a quick and easy way to make your black and white or grayscale image. We're going to be talking about black and white in just a minute. And the vibrance is also a global change. So that the vibrance, as you'll remember, adds saturation to those colors uh, that are not dominant in the photograph. In other words, it adds saturation to less saturated colors, whereas saturation adds saturation to all the colors. So that was a little bit of a digression, but uh, probably important. So in a photograph like this, I don't right off the bat see anything that, that I would change the hue of, with one possible exception, and, and that is this was taken late in the evening, and uh, there was a beautiful, rich uh, orange tint to the, to the air, to the sky. So what I might do is ever so slightly bump the oranges towards the red end and bump the yellows towards the orange end just a little bit. Uh, to bring uh, a little bit more color into this brickwork. So back to the saturation panel, what would I change in, in this image? Well, I might very subtly saturate the blue sky a little bit just to, to get the depth. And um, I might also add some orangeness to the orange of those buildings, make them a little bit more stand out. Experiment with, now the, the red saturation isn't adding much of anything. Uh, by saturating the yellow, no, that's not really adding anything either. So that's probably all I'd do in the saturation panel. The third panel that we need to look at is the luminance panel, and this refers to the brightness of a given color. So one is the color, that's hue. Two is the depth of color, which is the saturation, and three is the brightness of the color. And let's pick orange again. If we slide the slider to the right, those areas that are orange will brighten significantly. And I would probably slide that luminous slider to the left to darken those rich oranges, much as you'd expect uh, in a twilight shot. Possibly also the reds doesn't seem to be making too much difference, but one, one place you'll probably use the luminous sliders a lot is with sky by carefully sliding the blue slider to the left in the luminance panel, you can create darker blue skies and actually bluer blue skies. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let's return the, the uh, saturation sliders to where they were. Uh, so I'm, no, I'm not adding any blue to the sky Let's return these to where they were as well. So just by lowering the luminance, not only do I make the sky darker, but I make the sky bluer as well, as you'll see. So that can be a, that can be a pretty subtle tweak, but it m can make all the difference in the world to your, to your skies. I will add a, just a touch of um, saturation to the skies and take out some of the luminance from the oranges in the building. Good, I already like that better. What did it look like before? Oh, terrible. Okay, so that 
basically is the HSL panel. And you will get better at using this panel as you practice with it, as you play with it. Go out and take some photographs with very different color components and see how these sliders work. Especially important is seeing how they work on skin tones. Um, they, they are powerful, um, powerful tools. You can add red and uh, orange saturation very, very carefully, but even bump the red hue towards the orange possibly and the orange down towards the red can, can bring a, a richer uh, color to skin tones. But of course with skin tones, everybody's skin tone is different and every photographer that works with human beings uh, has a particular approach to skin tones. That is everything that you need to know. With one exception, and this, this one's interesting and worth taking a minute to look at, and that is black and white. You probably would imagine that if I go to the basic panel and change this treatment from a color photograph to a black and white photograph, that the color panel would disappear because you don't need it. But actually, it doesn't disappear. Instead of being the HSL panel, it now becomes the black and white panel. But what is interesting and cool about this and why it's one of the best features that a lot of people don't know about in Lightroom is that you can edit this black and white photograph based on the colors that were in the original photograph. So you'll remember when this was a color photograph, the bricks were reddish orange. So I could change the luminance of the brickwork on this building by moving the red and orange sliders, making uh, the brickwork lighter by sliding to the, the red and orange sliders to the right, make the thing fairly glow. If I move them to the left, the brickwork will become darker all the way almost to black. So knowing that will allow you to add selective luminance changes to improve the contrast and the, uh, the, the excitement in your image by tweaking the shades of black and white based on the colors that were in the, the original photograph. It's a very powerful tool, very useful. And I would say that while I generally hate pressing auto buttons because they never do what I actually want them to do, in the black and white panel, it's always worth giving the auto button a click because sometimes it does a really, really good job. Let's see what it does here. No, I don't like that at all. Uh, that, that made the brickwork too dark and um, yeah. So I would do that one by hand, but sometimes the, the auto panel is a real um, eye opener. So that's it. That's how we deal with color in Lightroom. And it's that basic. I would encourage you to, um, as soon as you memorize the eight colors, I would encourage you to go take some pictures and work in these sliders for a while. And uh, this is, I, I think, one of the ways that a photographer develops uh, an editing style all of their own is how they treat color. And uh, there's no shortcut to it. It's just, it's a, a lot of experience and uh, a lot of mistakes is, is how you get there. But anyway, that's it for now. Uh, the next tutorial, number six, I don't know what we're covering. I think probably we're gonna get into the, the detail and noise panel, uh, handling um, sharpening and uh, uh, fixing the problems that it causes. So until then, it's the weekend. There's a little bit of blue sky. I'm gonna go out and take some photographs. I hope you do the same. Stay out of trouble, be good, and I'll talk to you next week. Good day. <laughs>